This video will show you how to create a simple word art design using Photoshop. In the assignment, it talks about uh, downloading a typeface from dupont.com. So we're going to go ahead and click on that link. And we're going to look through all of the different typeface options that are out there. And there are tons of different options. You can easily look for certain categories, you know, like certain types of decorative typefaces or script typefaces. There are a lot out here. My recommendation to you is to stay away from things that are too thin. Stick with a typeface that's a little on the bolder or thicker side. That's going to really help you show the photo through your image or through your text, I should say. So I'm going to go back to cartoon. I'm going to go ahead and download one of these typefaces. Let's go ahead and choose crunch chips as my example. I'm going to download this. It might take a minute here. It's going to go to my downloads and then you can either click here or just go to your file explorer. And that's going to let you look under your downloads, double click on crunch chips, and then you can click on the OTF or TTF file. I'm just going to click on the OTF here and then click install. Now this is how you actually install a typeface. You can do this for as many typefaces as you want. Many of these typefaces are free for personal use as they say over here and some of them are free for commercial use. So you just have to keep an eye on what that means because sometimes um, you can get in trouble if you try and sell something you know, with that typeface used. So I have it downloaded. It's crunch chips so it will show up under the C's when I actually go and type something. We're going to go ahead and get set up in Photoshop. We're going to go to file new I'm going to set this up as seven and then five for height, 300 resolution. Make sure it's set as inches and then we'll click create. From here, I'm going to grab my type tool, the horizontal type tool, and then I can just click right here. I'll go ahead and type out a word. Let's do the word. I got to think of something. Um, galaxy. That sounds like fun. Galaxy. I'm going to highlight this word and then I'll look right up here. I'm going to look for crunch chips. We're going to scroll down to the C's. I should be able to find it as long as I've installed it correctly. CR, whoop, there, it, yep, we're crunch chips. Okay, now it's very small. We want this to be a lot bigger, so I'm going to change the size right up here. Let's go to like 150. Let's see, does it quite fit in there? Ooh, pretty close, except I feel like it's a little too close to the edges. So let's go ahead and type that in. Let's do 125. And I'll hit enter on the keyboard. Perfect. That's much better. I can use my move tool to adjust that, line it up with wherever I want. You could even just do control T if you wanted to like rotate or do something like that. If you want to, we'll do something like that. Cool. So we have background, we have my text layer. Now I need to find an image that represents galaxy. I'm going to go ahead and go back to um, the Google search here and we're going to go ahead and click on the Pixabay link. This is going to take us to a website which will let us download um, images for free. And these are all royalty-free images that we're allowed to use uh, for our own purposes. So avoid this first line, this first row. It says sponsored images. These you're going to have to pay for, so don't click on those. Scroll to the you know extra beautiful images down here for what you're looking for. So I'll just scroll through, find an image that represents galaxy that I think will work well on the inside. I kind of like this because this is the Milky Way galaxy. And then you'll click on the download button. So download, I like to do either the middle ones here or the top one. I'm just gonna go to the middle one, 1920 by 1404. That's a really good size. I don't wanna go too crazy. Like this is pretty big. I don't need it to be that big. So this is a good size. We're gonna click on download and then it should go to my downloads. And then we're going to go to Photoshop and we will go to File, Place Embedded. We're going to double click on that Galaxy image. You want to make sure your image covers up your text. So make sure it covers all of the text and then just hit Enter on the keyboard. And if you accidentally click out of that, you can just do Control T on the keyboard and that will let you resize. Um, be careful. Make sure you're actually in Photoshop and not Photo P. It's going to be a little different in Photo P. So we're using Photoshop right now. Make sure you're in the right program. Okay, this is exactly what we're looking for. We have background layer, we have our text layer, and then we have our image or photo layer. From here, it's pretty simple. We're going to right click right in this empty space here. We're not going to right click on the thumbnail. We need to right click right over here right click, go to create clipping mask, and then it's going to be on the inside of our letters. You can see it now right on the inside. I'm using my move tool to adjust if I need to. I can even do control T here if I want to make it bigger or smaller and adjust that way as well. I'll move it a little bit over this way. Cool. I actually might zoom in a little bit, so let's make it bigger. I just want to be able to see the stars a little more. 
That's a little better. Let's make that bigger so the stars will appear a little bigger. I like that. Okay. Next step is to fill the background. You can fill it with a gradient or paint bucket. If you right click on the gradient tool, that will pull up your paint bucket tool. Now I could go, you know, black. Whoops, make sure you have the right color selected. There you go, black. Um, if I really wanted to stand out um, or maybe doing more of a color, I would do a color that contrasts with my image. So I wouldn't do probably a blue background. I might do like an orange background or a brown background and see what that looks like. Let's try more of an orange. Ugh, that might be too much. I might do more of like just a tan or actually I kind of like that. Mm, let's go a little warmer. Okay. Um, and then other options would be using a gradient. So if you click on gradient tool, you can select, you know, your gradients, whatever colors are here. And there's also pre-made gradients right in here. I'll go to the oranges. Let's see what they got for gradients. Click and drag. There's some fun ones in there. These are just kind of like pre-made gradients ready for you to use. Ooh, I kind of like that. That's fun. Really stands out. Okay. Last step. You have your background color. You got your text, the clipping mask, the photo is inside of your letters. The last thing is you can click on your type layer here, right click, and we're going to go to blending options. This is going to give us the ability to do a stroke uh, or an outer glow. So stroke is right here. If you click on stroke, but you don't click on the word, it's not going to give you the option to actually edit. So we're going to click on the word stroke, make sure it's set to outside. And then here you can adjust the size of your stroke. You can change the color as well. So if you'd like to change the color of the stroke to something else, that's a really easy way to do it. This just helps the text be a little more readable. Usually I stick with a white or a black, but you can choose a color if you want. Another option is to do outer glow. And if I click on the word outer glow, this is where I can choose the color and then the size. So I can make this smaller or bigger. I can make it spread out a little more. Just kind of a cool effect with glowing. And then the bigger it is, the more like of a gradient you get. And then you can also play around with the blending mode of that glow as well. The color is there too. So feel free to play around with that. I'm going to just stick with stroke for this one. So we'll go back to stroke. That looks good to me. I'll click OK. And then from here, it's all about saving. So we're going to go to File, Export, Export As, and you'll choose JPEG as your file format. Click on the Export button. Make sure you save it in your downloads. I'll call it Galaxy, or you can call it WordArt. And then you'll upload this to Google Classroom as your assignment submission.